everybody. Okay, sit down, Sarah. We're going to read the next part of the book of badness from the little wolf. Okay, so we are on day 16. Dear Mum and Dad, my third day at Cunning College, an uncle has stopped my lessons. He said there was nothing in the larder and I must go for food. I said, do you mean go to the shops? They're miles away. He said, silence, Mona. I have no money, therefore you will have to hunt for lunch in Fretnin Forest. Bring me back a squirrel burger. Swiftly, swiftly. I thought, funny. Did that fox say he had bags of money hidden somewhere? Oh dear, I spent ages trying to catch squirrels, but I'm hopeless at climbing. All I got was some pea bugs and earwigs for crunchy snacks. Uncle went mad for a bit when I got back. He growled and kicked the stuffing out of the sofa. He was quite scary, but no more than Dad. Then he ate the crunchy snacks and went to bed. He says it is new moon tomorrow, therefore he must get his strength up. He would not even stop to tick my work in my book of badness. So not much badge work yet, but do not fret and frown. I will soon be the baddest boy in the pack. Yours, you betly, L. Day 17. Dear M and D, boring, boring, boring. The most interesting thing today was it rained. Here is a poem I wrote called Boring Snoring. It's raining, it's boring, Uncle Big Bad is snoring. He howls all night, he looks such a fright, he never gets up when you call him. This is a picture of me trying to wake him up. Day 18. Dear Mum and Dad, I feel like running away. It's rubbish here. No other pupils to play with, nothing to do, nothing to eat, and you do not even get letters because of Uncle eating the postman. I'm starting to wonder if he is as brainy as he keeps saying he is. I've not learnt a thing except huffing and puffing, and no new rude words either. I could stand it if Yellow was here to talk to, or even smelly breath. I'm a very lone wolf. I've not seen much of Uncle since I took him his breakfast in bed. I said to him, here's your nice breakfast. Now can you teach me the third rule of badness? He said, do not disturb. I must sleep all day and stay awake all night. I said, doing what? He said, being a terror. And then he said, fly and flee, small fluff ball. Go outside and do some quiet huffing practice. I did what he said. I huffed and puffed in the garden, but it just made me giddy. Just blowing dandelions. Yours fed uply, little. Day 19. Dear Mum and Dad, it's gone midnight and I can't sleep. Uncle is on the roof howling and howling at the new moon. It just goes on and on. He's not being a terror, just a pain. I can't stand it. Please let me come home. I promise, promise I will never read another book. I will stick crayons up my nose more often. I'll be rotten to smelly breath and hidey spoon and push up all the time. I'll be a real uh, pain. Only don't make me stay in this oh silly college. See, I can say lots of word, silly, uh, rude words now. Can't you just be proud of that? I cannot bear another night of Uncle's howling. Yours desperately, literally. Day 20. Dear Mum and Dad, guess what? We had a visitor today. Thrill, thrill. It was a tall man with a berry on his head and a whistle on a string. I thought, yippee, someone to try my grrrs on. I opened the door. I did my best grrr. He patted me on the head and said, sorry to bother you, Sonny Jim, but we're camping nearby. Could you possibly do something to mend the burglar alarm that kept going off last night on your roof? My poor cubs never slept a wink. Good morning. I said, fly and flee immediately. But he didn't seem to notice. He just saluted and said, thank you very much, Sonny Jim. Have a nice day. He did not fool me with that story about cubs. No way is he a wolf. I wonder what trick he's up to. I cannot ask Uncle. He's asleep again. Ah, oh, well, 
must go and look for something to pounce on. I'm starving. Yours peckishly, Lipley. Day 20, night time. Dear Mum and Dad, guess what? Just when I thought, oh no, I will never learn any more rules of badness, I found out number three. This is what happened first thing today. Uncle was up on the roof. I was having a good sniff around the kitchen looking for a snack and do you know what? I found loads of food. There was rat flakes and dried vole, even half a moose cake. They were hidden in the back of a cupboard and Uncle said there was no food in the house. The fox was right, he is a miser. It made me stop and wonder, perhaps Uncle has got some hidden treasure somewhere after all. I did not have time to search because all of a sudden, Uncle came down off the roof. Such a bad mood. He told me it was a waste of time howling because the moon cheats. He said, it comes nearer and nearer, but just when you have held your head off and you think it's close enough for you to take a nice big cheesy bite out of it, it backs away. Then he crawled into bed all grumbly. Thus and therefore, Uncle was fibbing. He was not trying to be a terror, just trying to get a free snack. What a greedy cuss. So guess what? I do not think Uncle always tells the truth. And that's how I found out rule three. I wrote it down in my book of badness. Rule three, fib your head off. Yours, Sherlock Holmesley. Me.